love training because I want to pass my skills on what I've got to the younger generation because these walls are part of our landscape and they're part of our heritage and they ought to be all preserved. Yeah, I did a lot of uh, training around the same time um, and I think that's when I started training with Trev as well because we sort of graduated from doing just complete beginners courses to doing a mixed course of beginners and advanced which worked really really well because the beginners could see where they could get to you know and you can always learn from watching other people um, but it gave me a chance to brush shoulders with other tutors rather than you just taking it on your own um, and you learn a lot by watching other instructors. One of the nicest experiences I've ever had was I was building along with a colleague of mine at South Anston Junior School and we had these, these different kids from the ages of about six up to eight or nine, uh, different classes every day. We went for about a fortnight and we had a different class every day. But they were fantastic. I think you get such a thrill out of teaching kids, it's surprising how enthusiastic they are. Anybody who wants to become a waller, you want to read some of the books, and I think it is important that they go on a training course to be taught the correct way how to build a wall. Because sometimes they can have the bad habits and if they're not taught correctly it can uh, cause them quite a few problems. And I would always advise somebody to go on a training course with a proper, fire, with a proper qualified training instructor. So he's taught, the, he or she is taught the correct way of dry stone wall. God, teaching really stretches you to the end because the stuff that you build that you wouldn't dream of building and then you have to help them get out of a problem or a mess or a pickle without touching it and doing it for them and that really does stretch your skill massively so through teaching it and observing I've learned loads and I'm still learning you, you never stop learning about water ever and I've never done a job that I've been complacent about every job I do I don't step back and think, oh my god, that's fantastic, that I'm brilliant. I stand back and I think, no, oh, I could have done that a bit differently. And I, I, I think that's what drives you on. If you ever stand back and, and feel smug, then it's, you're not going to get better. I think when I first got interested in it, it was Quite, from quite a small child really. really. I used to go about sometimes helping my dad, you know, putting in, passing him stones and putting him in the middle, in the wall and that sort of thing. Mm. But when I became a teenager, an early teenager, he said to me one day, he said, it's time you built a wall yourself. I said, I had a bit of experience, but I'd never done one that on my own. So, he told me where to have a go at this particular wall. I started it, I, I don't know how long it took me, it would take me quite a while in those days, but I did all a lot of it myself, I stripped it down and completely rebuilt it. And when I'd finished it, he said, right, Joe lad, we'll, we'll go and have a look at it. So he came along with me 
and uh, inspected it. He says, it looks all right to me. He said, I'd like you to climb over it a time or two. Now he said, I want you to walk on top of it. What I'd like you to remember, always put a good foundation in it, he said, because remember, the most important part of anybody's wall is the foundation. And he said, as you get older, he said, that'll apply to your life. I've forgotten that. <laughs>